After so much theory, it's an excellent time for some practice. In the upcoming chapters, we'll learn how to code various configuration objects and work on some practice tasks. It should benefit you when you start developing real-life applications. So let's start with the simplest object, which is a catalog. We take this example to learn how to access configuration objects by a code. For a start, we create a new catalog to keep the list of our personnel. Name this catalog staff. Add attributes first name and last name, both of type string. Also, add attributes position and phone number. Please pay attention that the phone number has type string and we apply a mask to have the data displayed correctly. Some words about the mask. We can apply it only to fields with type string. The mask sets a template and prevents the input of data that do not meet set requirements. In this case, we can use only digits because we have used symbol 9 for the mask. At that, the number of digits cannot exceed the number of digits we have put into the mask. And these are the symbols that you can use in a mask. For digits only, 9 allows only digits, hashtag allows digits, plus and negative signs, and spaces H allows hexadecimal numbers. Additionally, for digits and numbers, the at symbol allows all alphabet letters, putting them in uppercase. N allows all alphabet letters, but users can choose letter cases. U allows all alphabet letters and puts them in uppercase. Basically, U and A have identical roles. Exclamation point puts any entered symbol to uppercase. X allows Latin letters only. Now we switch to 1C Enterprise mode and enter data on our first employee. Can you for a moment imagine a store without a security guard? Well, we have the first employee added. and Now we can add the second one. But I suggest that we do it our way. Go back to Designer and create a catalog common form. We want to pick a simple generic form to do everything ourselves. First, we create a new catalog item in this form. For this purpose, we add form attributes with required data types. Within the form, we create group pages and add page create there. We need it for the convenient placement of elements on the form. Now we add all form attributes to our page create and make sure that you set the mask for phone number. Now there is a place for our data. But how do we process it? Well, create a command with a handler on the client and the other one on the server. We're going to process data outside of the form, but we still need form attributes. And here is where the code magic starts. So we turn to the catalog manager that grants access to all catalogs. This way, we access catalog staff and its method create item. We create a new catalog item, fill it with data sourced from the form, and then add the record to the database. Now there is little left to do. Our form has no link to any object and it does not automatically come up in 1C Enterprise mode, so we need to make it visible. As we have no custom layout for our application yet, we simply put the form on the application's homepage. An application's homepage allows up to two custom forms. As we want just one, we select a single column for our template. Now we click the green cross, find our form in the list, and add it to the homepage. We immediately see our form as we start the application in 1C Enterprise mode. Fill it with data and create a new catalog item. 
go to catalog staff and check the results. Well, we have a cashier added. And here we need to do just one more tiny thing. Go back to designer and add a breakpoint that should enable us to analyze the code. After that, we start the process of adding a catalog item. And start our action sequence. We start with accessing the catalog manager that links us to all catalogs included within the configuration. Now then we directly access catalog staff and its method create item. As a result, we get an empty element with type object in catalog staff. As mentioned before, we use type object to handle data objects directly. It means that it's that it is possible to not only read such objects, but also modify them. To make it easier, let us describe how we work with catalogs as a metadata object through a block diagram. So we go to the catalog manager to access a specific catalog. Then we get such catalog as an object and work with it. Data type catalog object supports write action. It means that we can use it to modify data.